Uh, from the four corners of this fair isle have come you, the finest archers in all the land, to compete for this golden arrow. On my signal, you may fire. Welcome to Scrap Heap Challenge, where two teams battle it out amongst a mountain of mangled metal to discover who will be the sharpest tool on the heap. For this brand new series, we've relocated to a brand new heap. And we've shipped in hundreds of tons of sparkling new scrap. Yes, to celebrate this all new Scrap Heap, we've set our sights on building the most extreme shooting machines ever. Speedy sharp shooters are the target of today's challenge. Our teams are going to build automatic archers. The bow and arrow has been around for more than 40,000 years. But with the advent of the gun, it was soon noticed that the bow was just too slow. Until now, that is. Yes, Scrap Heap Challenge brings the bow and arrow kicking and screaming into the 21st century as our teams bodge together rapid fire arrow launchers. But only pinpoint accuracy and rapid fire will propel them into the next round. Scream if you want to go faster, kids. It's the Big Dippers, a trio of fairground fixers from sunny Blackpool. These merry-go-round maintenance men look after the rides at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. It's likely to be a roller coaster of a day for Captain Dodgy, assisted by Brian and Steve. Opposing them are Stage Crew, a set of backstage boffins from Bristol. Yes, these three lovies plan to get their hands dirty as they bring their stage shaping skills to the scrappy. Captain Pup and scavengers Jet and Denzel are hoping to put in a compelling performance. Today's target is in your sights and you have just ten hours to shape up your sharpshooters. Go on the sound of the gong. Wait for it, wait for it. Go! I'm thinking maybe we need to produce some sort of force we can pull back. Some sort of crossbow type thing. Are we going to fire? Compressed air. Well. Yeah, maybe. Do something with wheels on at least, don't yeah. we, so we can move it from A yeah. to B. Moving platform for aiming. Our amateur archers seem to have got the point. But to help them make their shooters, we have invited along a pair of hot shots. Backing up the Big Dippers is movie armourer John Nixon. He's the man who puts the bang into Blockbuster. All right, guys. I'm your expert, John. I'm Dodgy. How do you do? Good to meet you. Hi, John, Steve. You sound like you've got it pretty well sussed, actually. Well, we were going to use some scaff tubes with a compressed air system. Scaffold tube's probably going to be too big, but certainly it's going to be a seamless smooth board tube yeah the big dippers hope to make an automatic air powered cannon they'll need both a compressor to collect the air a receiver to store the air under pressure and a valve to fire the weapon if they can spot a truck they'll find it contains all these bits then all they'll need is a barrel that's a snug fit to ensure that the arrows fire in a straight line with maximum velocity but it's essential that the whole system is airtight otherwise they'll soon be out of puffs are we going to get the vehicle with the actual compressor unit on or are we going to mount it separately? I think if we can find a vehicle that's suitable for what we want and yeah. it's got the compressor on it, that saves us work. Yeah. There's no point making work for that's ourselves. Right. Supporting the stage crew is medieval artillery expert and former special effects man Todd Todashini. If anyone can automate the archaic, Todd can. Any ideas? Uh, well, we were just talking here. We've come up with maybe um, a crossbow device. Yeah. Sprung loaded crossbow device that pulls back, uh -huh. locks, fires, pulls back, locks, fires. Like it. Uh, we're a bit worried about speed, loading speed, 50 arrows, 10 minutes. There's a great old thing. It's called the Chinese repeating crossbow. And it could be just what we want. The stage crew plan to build a repeating crossbow based on an ancient oriental design. 
They'll take two leaf springs from a car suspension to use as the bow. The bow string will be pulled back by a clever mechanism where the whole cartridge moves, priming the bow. When the string is at full stretch, it's released, firing an arrow forward. But if they don't get the release just right, they may be firing more than they bargained for. Can I just say I'd be a bit concerned that all this loading mechanism is, is complex. If that design is 1,500 years old and it still works and you've had tens of thousands of people working on it for one and a half millennia, there's something good about it. Yeah. Nice try, Todd, but it could take another millennia to convince our headstrong young captain pup. Yeah, we need some bits. Bits? That's a good plan. Got to be looking at Steve, something that's got brakes on it. Because air capacity is going to be everything to yeah. us. We're going to need a basic frame, Dens. Seamless tube yeah, with about a 14 mil bore. Yeah. We need a spring. And get as much as you can, because we don't want the other team getting it before we do. <laughs> right, lads, that'll do. Off you go, and good luck. Right, Doug. Loaded with their lists, our scavengers shoot straight out into the scrap. <gasps> yes, it's mayhem on the heap as our two teams must find the best bits and bobs to build automatic weapons. The Big Dippers, Steve and Brian, are sifting through the scrap, looking to pick up a truck to build an awesome air-powered cannon. Dodge, do you copy? Cineway, Ford Van. Brian's just having a look at it. I'm just going to have a look over this other side, see if there's anything over there, mate. Whereas the stage crew are looking east for inspiration and have agreed on a plan to build a mechanised Chinese repeating crossbow. Or maybe not. Young Captain Pup has decided the existing plans look decidedly dogged. He's worried about the rate of fire. You're stuck. I'm not convinced this is the best way to do this. <laughs> it's your team and you've got a strong will. You know, if you're not going to be behind it and committed no, to it... No, that's what I'm saying. If we make a decision, I will be committed to it. But I'm saying now we need to... Then you have to, you have to make the decision. If you're asking me my opinion, I say go this. Yes, there's a drama going on in the stage crew build area. <laughs> Todd has one last try to pull Pup round to his way of thinking. Now, have you come across something called a Sabo? No. We can get, like, length of drain pipe, maybe yeah. 14 inches long, pack it full of five darts, ten darts, yeah. whatever, and you shoot that. Stage crew expert Todd has had the ingenious idea of using a Sabo to increase their rate of fire. A Sabo is a disposable sleeve used to fire funny-shaped objects. It fits around the object and, when fired, falls away, allowing the funny-shaped projectile to carry on flying through the air. It's a great way of firing more than one arrow at once, but will the headstrong young pup go for it? Oh, Todd, I like it, mate. I like right. it. Right, and that would look really cool. I like that. Stage crew. Well, teams don't usually get the gas axe out this early on. Well, something we want, so <laughs> we're going to have it. What, what are you trying to get at under We there? want the springs off this lorry. Leaf okay. springs. And what are you going to be using these springs for? It's basically a crossbow principle. Magazine full of arrows that will self-load. Crossbow with a big tight wire. A wire will be pulled tight. Arrow will drop in. Automatic release. Right, well, I'd better leave you to it. Excellent. But uh, best of luck and enjoy, uh, enjoy firing the Thank arrows. You See you later. See you later. Bye. Denzel Ops for strong arm tactics on those leaf springs. Oh, that was it. That was nearly it. So Pup is sold on Todd's genius idea, which means Denzel's scavenging hasn't been a waste of time. Oh, my word. Now. Or has it? For Laurie, How many springs like this have you got? Only that one, and then we've got one that's the same length, but it's at least five or six layers. OK, because we need spring... If the spring's not as a matched pair, because we're using two springs... All oh, right, I didn't realise it was two. Ah, right, OK. Um, so we need a matched pair of springs? Yes. Right, OK. That could be a job. Well... Denzel breaks the news to Jet. Oh, so got so both there. sides need to be even matched, so we're looking for one vehicle. So there's no springs. point getting the other one out. No. <laughs> we're all a waste of time, but we can't find anything. Not at the moment. Got to keep rummaging around cars, I reckon. Well, there's there like a lot over there. We're lagging behind, I think, aren't we? I don't know. Yes, boys, you are. Yeah. Eleven, Steve. Go ahead, Dodge. How are you doing, mate? Dodge, we, we've found the vehicle. Brian's happy with it. Got some air tanks on. Um, the only thing is, it's not starting at the moment. 
a bit of a, yeah. But I'm a bit worried, Brian. We haven't got home start. <laughs> <laughs> But is there something on the in the truck that you actually want? Yeah, to... there is. Yeah, there's uh, there's a compressor and air tanks and everything you need on here. So you, could you build the whole on the back of this. on the back of that? On oh, the back that's of right. And so you just run the truck. That pressurises the tank. Yeah, <laughs> and fires the errors. Big trucks are harder to stop than little cars, so they use air brakes, which are very powerful. The air is crushed by the compressor and then stored in a receiver. When the truck brakes, it uses the air to push the brake shoe onto the wheels to bring the truck to a standstill. So, if the dippers can get this truck turning over, they can use its brakes to get the gas for their air-powered cannon. Trouble is, they can't get the engine started, the air brakes won't work, and they won't get very far. I, I mean, it looks in fairly good nick. Yeah, I think I mean, it'll it's done go. a few miles, I yeah. think. I think it'll go. <laughs> The boys from Blackpool have everything they need to build their air cannon on this broken-down truck. Uh, but they'll have to get it back to the build bay. But it's the stage crew are really having trouble getting started. Denzel, hang on, mine power. And their communications have now broken down. My team seem to be... It's their radios are on. <laughs> In fact, actually, you should give them a talking to next time they come oh, well. on, because they have got... Hello, so never Denzel! Denzel! Denzel, is someone shouting at us? No, I don't think so. Those two will have to get the scrap out of their ears if they're going to get a standing ovation. We are the stage crew. The stage crew are a trio of theatre technicians. Lead man Pup, so called for his pluckiness and youthful exuberance, is known as a bit of a perfectionist. If we were doing this properly, I'd probably find myself with a straight edge in here to check it runs horizontally. Because I have the vision, you know, I sort of know when something's going on, I, I think that's not going to fit into the picture. Then there's the supporting cast, engine obsessive Jet. I love jet engines, they're great. Jet engines rock. No one should ever use anything else apart from jet engines for everything. And lastly, an extra any cast would want is Denzel, who found his fabricating skills on the farm. You know, he's very much not sort of your bog standard graduate design engineer student. He's seen it from the real life side of things. So what's the stage crew's motto if things aren't going their way? The show must go on! Dance, did you find any straight bits? <laughs> With communication restored, the stage crew are putting in a rousing performance on their repeating crossbow. Pup builds the stand. The lock and stock is sorted. So engine gearbox here. Yeah. Cue Denzel with two smoking leaf springs. Okay, good. Now, in a perfect world, you would have got the ones without holes in the middle. But in a perfect world, shall I can shut up? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the Big Dippers are still working on that broken down truck. It's got all the gear they need on it to build their air cannon. Expert electrician Steve is having a rough ride trying to get it jump started. Where's the big truck, Stephen? We're all trying to get it started now, Dodge, and uh, we're bringing it in. They need the pressurised gas system from the brakes. It's not going to go. He might be feeling the pressure, but his team know all about thrills and spills. The Big Dippers, a team of roller coaster repairmen from Blackpool. <laughs> Off they go! When Captain Dodge isn't enjoying the wind in his hair on the big one, he's managing these theme park techies. It hasn't always been an easy ride. Dodge has had to earn the respect of his team. Yeah, should be no problem with Dodge for the first ten minutes. We'll just end up building it for him, really, and uh, we're just taking the credit, I think. No, it'll be a team effort, right? Team effort. While scavenger Steve doesn't see the amusement in fairgrounds, he's not happy with heights. Steve's not safe, really. Off anything no. over four foot, is he? No. Two pair of socks, and that's it for Steve. And they have a secret weapon under their kiss me quick hats with loudmouth Brian. One of the secret weapons on our team is Brian. This man can build anything. We'll rely on you, Brian, because you can make something out of nothing. You are that good. <laughs> anyway, we, we are, are the Big, big dippers, dippers and we're going to win. Come on. Well, they won't be unless they can get their truck started. Brian, do you want to drive it? 
He may not be confident on the roller coasters, but Steve certainly knows his way round an engine. That's a straight. Right, take her in. Go on, Brian. Dodge the copy. The vehicle's coming in. Okay. The truck for their air cannon is in, and it's got everything they need on it. Radio doesn't work. Well, almost everything. Airing. Just these two. Airing. Very positive or utterly presumptuous. Time will tell. This week's judge is Master of Archery Steve Ralphs. From Orlando Bloom as Legolas to Kira Knightley as Guinevere, he's the man who teaches the stars how to shoot. Nice to see you. Good. Yeah. Welcome to the heat. Thank you very much. Now, uh, we seem to have two... Uh, they finally decided on their design, as far as I can right. see. We've got the big dippers with their compressed air cannon type design right. and the, the stage crew with their traditional crossbow. Yeah, so it's a, it's a more it works along the lines of the Chinese repeating crossbow, which is a manly operated machine. And what the stage crew are doing is they're going to use a mechanical means to, right. to replicate that design. And, of course, the, the big dippers are making basically what's a gun. It is essentially a gun, isn't it? Yeah, a gun, yeah. yeah. Conceptually, which one is more likely to actually fire something? Conceptually, the, the, the Manchu repeating crossbow is an age-old tested design that works, but was prone to jamming. <laughs> so I'll go, I'll go with the gun. I'll go with the massive air gun at the right. moment. At this stage. Yes. We need to get, get rid of this exhaust, don't we? Jet is firing up his engines as he gets gas axing. Pup's putting on the leaf springs for the bow. Things are really hotting up for the backstage boffins. Maybe a little too hot. Jet's gas axing has set fire to the car's upholstery. Sorry. Just took a face full of whatever. I reckon we're out, mate. With a flagrant disregard for his own safety, Denzel continues to try and get off that reduction oh, gearbox. Can you get any more lift on, on it for me? Lift. It's essential, as it'll be the speed regulator for their repeating crossbow firing mechanism. Yeah. That'll do. <laughs> do you want to put it straight in the trailer with me? Yeah. While Jet and Denzel are collapsing a car, <laughs> Captain Dodge decides to take down that truck. One, two... Not happy with just destroying the front end, Dodgy cuts that lorry down to size. This is the main find, though. This is, this is good, and it works. Hey, perfect. Did a bit of fabrication. Oh, cut the roof Made, off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Made into a cabriolet. <laughs> I know you say it's effectively an air cannon, isn't it? That's right, like yeah. That. We're using the air system off the actual truck right. to uh, going through the receivers. Do you know how many how many blasts you'll get from a... No, it's uh, we're going to try later right. on, uh, a bit of trial and error. Well, I mean, I think by the looks of things, you've still got a fair amount to do, haven't you, Steve? So yeah, looks like Dodge is going to have a word in a minute, so I'd best get back into action. All right. Captain Dodge drags in the floor plate and dishes out the orders to his roller coaster repairers. So this plate is ready to go on here. Stitch, stitch, stitch. From here to there, from here to there. One at the back. We're going to mount that tank on here, however. But expert John thinks there may be a problem. I think we won't have enough air in these. He thinks the truck's brakes might not hold enough air. I think what we should do at this point is we'll find more receivers. Yeah, because they don't, they don't, you only have press brakes a few times and... That's right, and yeah, it's gone. gone. I know, I, yeah, I do. So it's back out onto the heap for Steve and Brian, looking for some air tanks. <laughs> Meanwhile, Todd and Pup are tanking through their build. They finally seem to be seeing eye to eye. I mean, it's starting to take some sort of shape now, which is... Always a bit of a boost to the uh, morale. Well, this looks absolutely fantastic, Steve. This is the Chinese repeating crossbow, and what the stage crew are building is the descendant of this. This is its ancestor. This right. is the manual version, whereas their machine works automatically. And it addresses the age-old problem that a crossbow has of its rate of fire. So you can load into this. The string is captive, and there's a small peg. It has a mechanical so just, repeating motion. So does that mean I can actually have a go and shoot some darts? So you're going to pull rank on me? Well, I, you know, I think, I, I think <laughs> yes. Yes, simply I am. Fine. <laughs> so tell me what to do then. I, it, you, don't, you don't put it up by your shoulder then? You have no, it down no, 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 it's held down here right. and you cycle, move the, this hand back, that back there. And by cycling this forwards, 
engage. So you just pull it back? Yes, as fast as you can cycle the action. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic! Wow! I'm getting sparks! <laughs> So you see, it's, it, and, and what the stage crew are doing is they're using this device, but they're going to make it work automatically. Right. They're going to make it use, the, you know, the machine's going to do it rather than have an operator. They're going to win. This is straightforward. Mm. But the Chinese didn't have compressed air. They didn't or did they? Air. And they also did, did, they had more than 10 hours to make one. There's a lot less than 10 hours left as Super Scavenger Denzel picks out bolts to keep that bowstring tight. <laughs> Dropped one. Mustn't do that. They're like gold oh, dust. Been rummaging all day for these. Here, boys. To start they, if you didn't have a beard, I'd snog you. Oh, no, thank God I got a beard. <laughs> <laughs> Not many people get that off, Denzel. <laughs> Actually, that, I think that's going to get us out of a mess. Yeah, that's nice. No nook and cranny is safe from the Big Dipper's bodging bloodhound Brian, as he may have solved the Big Dipper's air loss problem. Right, I've got another right receiver here. Problem solved, and Brian shows off his welding skills. Brian? What? Just gone through a pipe. Brian may well look sheepish. He's just tried to weld a rubber pipe. Yeah, well. You could, you could hear the air coming out. We should be going. Well, uh, Teams, your attention, please. You are halfway through the build. You have five hours remaining. Five hours remaining, teams. Thank you. Better pull your finger out, you, Dodge. John, we need to be doing a bit. If their air cannon isn't airtight, they may as well take a train back to Blackpool. This really is a roller coaster of a day for the fairground fixers. Will the stage crew get their crossbow repeating? It was your idea. No, it's your idea to do centre one. And will the big dippers get back on track? That makes sense, yeah. Welcome back to Scrap Heap Challenge, where our two teams are building automatic archery machines. The stage crew, a team of theatre technicians, are looking hot Wait. under the collar, forging their repeating crossbow. That, I think that's going to get us out of a mess. Yeah. The Big Dippers, roller coaster repairmen from Blackpool, have nearly all the bits they need to build an awesome air cannon. But they've cut through an essential air hose. Right. What? Just gone through in pipe. It has done. Yeah. Under here, Yeah. <coughs> there's a set of pipes and we must have just gone through them. Brian may be looking uh, guilty, well. but thankfully expert John is there to get him out of a spot of bother. Well, at the end of the day, it, it doesn't matter. What's All we have to do is swap one of the front brake pipes yeah. onto the compressor and run that into the distribution oh. valve, because it doesn't matter about the brake pipes. Got... His quick thinking has got them out of a serious bit of scavenging, and they can get back to building. Where are you going to put that one, Brian? I am not bothered. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got these. We've we had a. There you go. How's that? So we're vaguely halfway through-ish now. I mean, have you changed your mind at all on favourite design? I mean, no. It's my design. I, I love. I love what the Big Dippers are doing. It's just it's the most fantastic design. I mean, the, the crossbow, the repeating Manchu crossbow design is is, a, is an old favourite of mine. I'd like to see it work with an automatic system rather than a manual system. Mm. But it's so ambitious, you know, what the Big Dippers are doing, that if they can pull it off, it will be very impressive. Because, no, I mean, I have no idea the kind of pressures that air brakes produce, but I've got a feeling it's quite high. It's very if you're high. channelling it down one tube to fire one dart out. John, the expert, is saying we're going to have to recharge, so we might get three shots off. So if, you're on right. a t if the challenge comes down to a time, then they might miss out. They might be more accurate, but they might miss out on yeah. time. So, Steve, is your money still on the Big Dippers though, at this stage? I think they'll take it to the last minute, but if they get it, yeah, my money's on the, the Big Dippers. The receivers go on and look OK for now. I'm sure tomorrow it'll uh, all come good. Right. Say, what size are the ports in it? <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Is that all the movement it takes? That, that's, that's magic, mate. Not that. We'll use that. We're using this? Yeah. Right, let's get that get off. Get the pipes and everything. Was 
that on-off valve should be perfect for releasing bursts of air to fire their arrows. So are you having as much fun as you hoped you would be having? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> One team that is definitely having fun is the stage crew. Jet's attaching a gearbox from an old family car. Fabricated your own box section there, Stewie? Yeah. It's stuck, mate. It's all the matters. It'll be able to adjust the speed of the camera that will push the trigger up to catch the bowstring. And the bow is getting strung. <laughs> nearly there, nearly there, nearly there. there. Look at that. More than halfway through, and the stage crew are putting in a rousing performance. Yeah, that's a little happier, isn't it? Todd and Pup may have made up, but that scrap repeating crossbow is looking anything but friendly. They to pop that up a little bit so there's a sort of more or less parallelization new word. You, you mean you want that with a bit, a bit of heat and smashed up? Yeah, very good. But not all is well with the stage crew, as Pup's trigger design is looking decidedly dodgy. Yeah, that's actually quite a fundamental problem, isn't it? Oh. It was your idea. No, it was your idea to do the centre one. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, oh, my, right. actually, it was my, my, my edge one wouldn't have this problem, would it? <laughs> if we'd done it the way oh, I wouldn't. wanted to do it in the first place, oh. we would have this problem. Right, anyway, but we've still got the problem. We've still right. got the problem. How are you all doing? This looks great. Are you pleased with right. it? Yeah, yeah, please. Todd, you're an old scrappy pound. Mm. How are you feeling about the work as it stands at the moment? Um, I think it's all great. Um, definitely the problem is the trigger. Todd was running through all sorts of, you know, different ways of doing it. The, the four main tried and trusted ways that go back 1,500 years. And uh, we're using something completely different, which is partly my responsibility. Uh, so I do feel a bit responsible. Mm. But have I feel confident we can do it. It's OK. Todd? The reason that it hasn't been done before is because it doesn't work very well. <laughs> Originally, the stage crew planned to use a tried and tested Chinese repeating crossbow mechanism. But Captain Pup didn't like the look of it mm. and has come up with his own design. He's designed a motor driven cam that, when pushed forward, catches onto the string. When it's pulled back, the trigger is tilted by a notch that releases the string. Nice idea, but as it's never been used before, there is no guarantee it'll work. There's still a, quite a lot. To do those. Oh, things. masses. You're going to get it all done? <laughs> yeah. I hope so. Todd? Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's just fine. It's just fine. <laughs> <laughs> like a true, true scrap for old friend. friend. <laughs> Let's get a wriggle on. The stage crew are looking like a well drilled team. Denzel is putting on the rod, which will attach the motor to the trigger. We know where the string is now. Two. Got a nice hole there through the trigger block. Might have to do a little bit more. To it's a little button. bit marginal. Uh, so if you, you cut it to that, yeah. yeah, cut it to that point. While top bodgers, the stage crew are putting on a show. If in doubt, hit it hard. Things are a little sleepier in the Big Dipper's corner as Brian gets a lesson in gun geometry. So the crank. Now I said 356 before. 316. Then we want a bit behind that for the rod, I would suggest another 25. So, 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 that means, so it's a 366, so, 150, 170, 171.5. Does so that make sense? Oh, that sounds complicated to me. Anyway, how does it load the arrows, John? That's what's going to happen. It's going to make some good old noises. <laughs> ah, now we get it. Right. Welcome to this week's Scrap Lab. This week we're going to make an air-powered sock shooter. Like the Big Dipper's air cannon, we'll be using air pressure. But instead of shooting arrows, we'll be launching laundry. First we need something to create pressurised air. We'll be using bellows. And on the end of the bellows, we've put on a barrel. Pop the sock into the barrel and make sure it's a snug fit. Then, when I jump onto the bellows, all the air has to leave. Because the socks are snug in the barrel, air builds up behind them. When the air pressure gets too high, the socks are flung out of the barrel. 
And that's how we can launch laundry by using air pressure. And the Big Dippers plan to up their air pressure by using a valve to block the barrel. Well, they would be if they could get it to work. No, we can't use this. Unless we can think of a way of making it so it's pressed until we want it to fire. It's bad news from expert John. This could be a really big dip for the dippers. Evening, Evening chaps. Like a gun. Yeah. Evening. Yeah. I've just heard a, a, a slight rumour that there's been a vague change of plan. There's been a massive change there's of plan. There's been a massive change of plan, I beg your pardon. There's a been a massive change, change, change of plan. Oh, no, yeah. really. And why is, but why is that? I mean, the, the, this still looks quite sort of air cannon-like. It, it, it is. The problem has been that we, we were trying to have a nice controlled system where the air would be triggered to fire the arrow at the precise moment so right. we didn't waste air. It hasn't happened. We haven't been able to find the right valve. The valves are too big. It means they, they have a lot of air in them, right. air that should be propelling the arrows. So we've now decided to eliminate the valve altogether. Right. So we'll now have a constant supply of air. Right. Because the Big Dippers can't find a valve to release the air to fire their arrows, they've taken the radical action of not bothering to put one on at all. This means there'll be a constant supply of high-pressure air into which their motorised pusher will feed their arrows. All very well, but with all that air hissing out everywhere, if they're not quick to find the targets, they could soon be out of breath. You know, you know, you said we're going to have a constant air supply to it. Yep. It's going to use twice as much oh, air. It's going to use a lot more than that. Yeah. Well, at least. No, no, it'll use like 10, 20 times as much. Because it's just. Yeah. So, Steve, to have both teams at this, you know, fairly late stage in the game, not really getting close to <laughs> finishing, and having huge amounts of problems, is it slightly worrying, isn't it? Really? Well, it's uh, the stage crew seem to have it all, all under control in as so much as they got everything bolted on. And the Big Dipper's nothing still. No. They've had problems with the air, they've had problems with the valve, they've had problems with the hose connections. They're really going to take it to the wire time-wise. If they can get it to work, the accuracy of the Big Dipper's machine will pay off. Right. It's just getting the time now. They've just got to, yeah. Their backs are against They may the be wall. doing a little bit of tinker time work tomorrow. Just a wee bit. Just sort of polishing, just the, <laughs> polishing their barrel. <laughs> I think so, yeah. So the pressure is on for the Big Dippers as they try and get their air cannon ready. Steady. Steady. It's fine-tuning filing out that barrel. Then all they have to do is attach it to the truck and its air braking system. The cartridge goes on to hold a stack of sabos that will drop down in front of the bowstring. So about here, I reckon, about there. And we need to start making our sabos because we're a little bit short of those and we need to, need to make them. Oh, that's the cutting in half of the tube? Yes. Denzel's underway with the Sabo, the disposable sleeves that will hold a volley of arrows. If they don't get them sorted, there won't be any arrows in the air. Jet fits the starter motor. Even perfectionist Pup is bodging away. One little mistake costs five minutes in these crucial moments. Yep, are you finished welding, though? Yeah. What's, um... What's going on with the starter motor position? Is that under control? Yeah, we've just made an M12 bolt out of a piece of stud and a nut, welded it on. And oh, it was just sloppy 10 mil in a hole, was it? I think so. With all the bits in place, that trigger mechanism looks ready for testing. <laughs> they have to get it right or their bow simply won't fire. Wow! <laughs> it does have a tendency to uh, lock it. In it locks at the end a bit. We, that just needs extending. This thing really works. Even if it just shoots, let alone if it's automated, if it just shoots, it'll be brilliant. The Pleasure Beach bodgers are also up against it with their air cannon. Steve cobbles together the cartridge. Yeah, it just wants... Yeah, no, the it's... ammo will be gravity-fed into the path of the pusher, which will pop it up to the pressurised air. If it jams, they'll be in a sticky scenario. Oh. Well, it's solid, that, mate. Bram, it's OK, that. It's not going anywhere, All right, that. that's all right. John yeah. just said put one on the back. That's... Right. Yeah, it's solid, that. It's not going anywhere. What, what about that height? Is that enough to get 50 in, or are you going to have to extend it? No, no you want to put a diagonal on that. In case it gets sure? a clout sometime. It's just, if it gets a clout, it'll go out of square. All right. Can that go on, though? Let me just sure make sure this runs first.
with them all on, and like you said before, we might even have to put a bit of weight. Yes, we could. Is it all right? Can we have yes, that on? we can weld that on. All right. Uh, teams, you have one hour remaining. 60 minutes build time remaining, teams. One hour, that's all. Thank you. Is that their team, Robert? Have we got five? You're right, Dodge. You. I don't. I haven't seen the Big Dippers for a while. What's happening with them? I mean, it's an ingenious method of, of, of loading and firing, and you know, it's all automatic. So it should go, tung, 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 like that. But there yes. is air escaping constantly. They need they need 50 weeks <laughs> to make this work. It's not going to, you know. I think there was a definite battle of wills mm. between Pup the captain mm. and Todd the expert. But it looked great. They looked like having yeah. kind of a uh, crossbow It does look thing. really good, doesn't it? How they're going to pull it back. They're both having the full on frantic scrap experience. Yeah, when they finish sweating lots, yeah. shaking a bit and twitching, and yeah. very, very dirty. Yeah. In fact, Denzel is he, a bit like a kind of darker version of the honey monster, really. He is, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, it goes that way. But I think we want to think about having a little tester here. You're kind of committed then. The problem what, is you're what, committed. The, what we don't want to do is rip this apart. That is amazing. They've actually finished. And they're going to do a test fire any minute. In fact, I'm going to get out of the way. With the stage crew ambitiously about to test their trigger, the Big Dippers are dangerously close to finishing. Don't shoot anybody, will you? We'll try not to. To the left, to the right. In the nick of time, with seconds to spare, both our scrappy shooters are looking ready to take their aim. Who's going to be doing the shooting on this? <laughs> Who's not going to be doing the shooting on this? OK, teams, your ten hours has expired and it's time to set your sights on tomorrow's target. Yes, teams, get ready to lock and load your pointy projectile firers. Well done, teams. Great build. It's been a roller coaster of a day for the roller coaster repairman, and the backstage boffins encore didn't quite go as planned. Will the Big Dipper's air cannon be a fairground attraction? Or will the stage crew's ramshackle repeating crossbow hit the bullseye? The two teams are given the traditional tinkering hour to ready their contraptions for competition. There'll be two tests. First, testing for accuracy, and then the long distance golden shot. While the roller coaster repairmen give their truck a paint job, it's a titanic tinker for the theatre techies as the night before they broke their crossbow. How are we getting there, boys? That's twisted on there. Let's hope that hour is enough. Round one, and accuracy is the name of the game. Each of those concentric circles is worth more points the closer to the bullseye they get. Well, now we're here, and I'm really looking forward to seeing some actual bolts flying through the air. The thing about the the Big Dipper's machine is you're distracted by the vehicle, yes. and you just got to remember that the actual the working is just that it, end. It's just that end. It's not a stealth vehicle, really. It's definitely it? not a stealth. No. no, no, you wouldn't beat up on the enemy. The uh, the stage crew have built this enormous leave me alone crossbow. It's, yeah. it's making a statement just by sitting there. Yeah. It's yeah. it's going to be an interesting challenge. First up, it's Blackpool's finest, the Big Dipper's. Expert John loads up the air-powered cannon, Steve and Bry power up the compressor, and Captain Dodgy is the marksman. Big Dippers, prepare to unleash your bolts from the blue! OK, go. Cool. Air on, electrics on. Oh, yeah! Wow! Oh, way over the target. Oh, oh yes! It's a flying star. There's another problem for the Big Dippers. Now they're jammed, now they've got a, a jam. This could be costly for the Pleasure Beach boys. 
that they're now removing some of the bolts because yeah. there's too much weight, I think, pulling them down. Now get the back and be ready to fire. So there's a quick fix. Go, 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 go. That's incredible. Uh, Robert Talisa, Robert Talisa, what's it looking like from the forward position? Well, Rob, it's looking like it's worked. I mean, there's a few arrows that have gone over the top and quite a few have fallen short. But certainly there's enough that have gone in the target. They're going to get a very decent score at the end of this. I mean, it's looking a bit like an orange hedgehog from where we're sitting. It's a phenomenal amount of bolts they've hit in there. Nice one, mate. Well done. Yeah. Good shooting. Excellent. Wow, it looks even better from here than it did from over there. But it was going one after the other. Bang, 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 bang. It, was, it looked awesome I think we can from get back a, there. I think we can get a bit of distance on it if we build that air pressure up. Yeah, we let the air pressure go. We can, we can lob them probably 50% further, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Lisa to Robert. Lisa to Robert. Do you read me over? I read you loud and clearly. Now, what is the score? Have you managed to count up all those bolts? They've got a grand total in the first round of 61 points, which I think for the Big Dippers <laughs> is brilliant. That's a stunning start for the fairground fixers. The stage crew load up their sabos. Remember, each of those drain pipes is loaded with arrows. Let's hope that ramshackle repeating crossbow will stand up to the strain. A stage crew, don't get stage fright and launch your sabots on the sound of the horn. <laughs> Oh, oh, wow! Wow! Keep it going, keep it going. Right. Oh, what? Very <laughs> Excellent. Bit of elevation, please. That joke, all right? Stop. Stop. <laughs> oh. But there's a problem. Still not coming out. Something's not quite working. I well, it's not releasing, is it? It's the trigger mechanism yeah, that's not it's working. Yeah, too much power now. There's too much pressure actually on the trigger itself. Yeah. Ready? OK. Go. Right. Shoot. Stop. Cup's patented trigger just okay. won't let go of the it's bowstring. Not, it's not letting go, is it? Oh, they're wasting all their ammunition, aren't they? They've got to sort And time. And yeah. Time's running as well. OK. But it's working again. Oh, no. Oh, the last time it was a beauty. All over. Happy. Result, guys. <laughs> Who thought of that trigger anyway? <laughs> you did. <laughs> Lisa to Robert, Lisa to Robert. I reckon the stage crew had a pretty good round there. What do you think? I was very impressed, even though the, the battlefield is littered with spent sabots. I'm very impressed. They got a hell of a lot of arrows in the target. They did, and they managed to score an impressive 39 points. Very good. That's really good, isn't it? Well, not quite as good as the Big Dippers, but they are well and truly still in the mix. Round two, and it's the golden shot round. That target is over 30 metres away. Only arrows that hit that tiny golden spot will count, but they'll be worth a massive 25 points for every hit. First up, the Big Dippers. Hopefully their loading mechanism won't jam this time. Big Dippers, it's been a roller coaster ride. Fire on the sound of the horn. <laughs> yes! yes! Bullseye oh right God. in the middle. Straight away, the Big Dippers are peppering the target. But not many are going in the goal. No air. That's gone. No air. They've lost pressure and will have to recharge their air with the clock ticking. And they're off again. Kill it. So that's two on target. Hardly a resounding victory. Stage crew, the last round confident. We've modified. What We've do you think it was? Work. The uh, pup trigger pup was being a little I you were temperamental, say pup <laughs> but we have uh, rectified a few bits and pieces, a few crucial components. Mm -hmm. So uh, we feel a bit more confident. What about the rest of the team? Do you feel as confident as Pup now? Yeah, does? yeah, a lot better yeah. than it was last time. <clears throat> See what happens. Todd, I'm just hopeful. Let's hope they do all right this time.
Come on, stage crew. A gentlemen of the stage crew, this is your final call. Fire your bow on the sound of the horn. Short. Jack up. It wasn't short by much. Shoot. Okay, lift up. I'm a bit worried. It looks like something might be jammed. I can see Denzel in there with a crowbar. The last round, it was quite funny, but this round... Shoot. Bit more dressing on that uh, trigger. Coming out, one up one's ready. Denzel, pop it out. Pop out the string, Denzel. All oh, right, so Got him. He may be just taking the weight slightly as well. That's fine. Shoot. Come on. Ooh. Short. Long. Right, long. They just can't get the distance right. Short. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so close. But remember, only arrows in the gold spot oh. count. Take the tiniest smidge off it. Tiniest smidge. Hold it tight. They're all just a bit too high for the gold. Yeah. But at least they know they can reach it. Come on. Clear. Lisa to Robert, isn't this just absolutely infuriating, over? It's amazing, because they can hit the target, they can reach it. <laughs> In theory, all it needs is one sabo to hit the target, and all the arrows will get into the gold spot. They've got perfect distance and aim, and they've got just one sabo loaded with five arrows left. Surely they can win with this shot. Oh, OK. Oh, OK. Oh. Oh, that's a real shame as the final curtain comes down for the backstage boffins. Stage crew, big dippers, thank you both for a really, really enjoyable challenge. But, as you know, one team has to win and one team has to come second. So well done and commiserations to the valiant stage crew. I'm sorry, you were well second today, but you did very well. Well done, guys. Brilliant. And well done to the big dippers, this week's winners. Well done. Yay! 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 I haven't got my big coat on. <laughs> <laughs> and if that hit the spot, then join us next week for even more metal mayhem. Stop, stop. The stop. teams will have just 10 hours to fuse together an all terrain electric car. That's it, stop. But we've got no milk. Before left. taking on the mother of all milk rounds. <laughs>